Hello, Tanya Laird here, and welcome to part one of lecture 11 of ENGR 2301 Engineering Statics. In lecture 11, we are going to be looking at um, basically frames and simple machines, and they're going to be analyzed the same way. So in part one of this lecture, I'm just going to go through some um, just uh, categorization and ways of talking about systems of rigid bodies or ways of defining what a frame is. Basically, I'm going to go into discussion, uh, discussion of just what a frame is, how it's different from a truss, how it relates to the terms rigid body, uh, uh, the difference between members and joints, and also discussion of some of the uh, types of joints that we will see in uh, frames and uh, simple machines. Okay, so uh, this is quite a big topic and, and it is fairly broad. Uh, so we're, And we're just going to touch on the surface of this. Uh, when, if you really want to get into frame analysis, uh, for both, our, I know in this class we have both civil and mechanical engineering students. The mechanical engineering students, you will go on and take uh, entire courses after this, uh, also including mechanics materials, but also things like dynamics and machinery, uh, a whole bunch of other courses, upper level courses that feed or uh, that uh, that follow from this. This feeds into, and then in the civil engineering side, you'll take courses like uh, after mechanics and materials. You'll take courses like structural analysis, and in that class, you will learn about uh, all sorts of uh, types of frames and that sort of thing. Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, and again, in part one of this lecture, I'm just going to go over some very basic topics on frames and simple machines. And I'm going to focus mainly on frames because my definition of frames is really going to include simple machines as well. Uh, simple machines are usually just frameworks or basic frameworks that are applied for some sort of mechanical work. Like a, uh, according to my definition, a uh, something like a wrench would be a framework, or actually something like a pair of pliers would be almost a framework. But that particular special type of framework is used for some mechanical purpose. So a framework. Or a frame. Now there are any number of ways we could define this, but I could say that a frame is a collection of members uh, joined together by joints or connected at joints. Connected at joints. That is a very simple definition, but uh, it's maybe not quite as cohesive or as specific as I would like. Um, so in turn, I should probably define what a, a member means. A member is a rigid body uh, that has a clear axis, a clear and definite axis and clear and, and start points. Ending and start points. And a joint is some sort of connecting mechanism between members. Uh, between members. So this is one of those things that's this is my best effort at, at producing a unified definition and a relatively simple definition of a frame, but it's not going to be perfect. There's no perfect way to describe this. Uh, when I describe a frame, or what I really think of when, in terms of definition of a frame, is almost a graphical thing. If you ask me to define a frame, I almost rather than want to put it in, in words, I almost rather want to draw a picture because. It's almost, uh, the way I personally see frames, it's almost what it is not versus what it is. So for example, if you have a, oh, maybe simply support, it doesn't have to be simply support, it could be fixed connection or whatever. If you have something like this, uh, where you have, oh, I don't know, maybe a column here. Maybe there's a pin joint here and another column and maybe I could put up a fixed joint there, why not? Instead of just another pin. Instead of another pin there. Instead of another pin. And I could have just a fixed joint here, fixed support. 
Why not? Um, this is one type of frame. Or I could draw the basically the amount of, or numbers of frames I could draw are endless. I could have something like this. That's just um, four rigidly supported, uh, rigidly connected columns and beams. Well, two beams and two columns. Something like this. This is a very clear frame as well. I have a, I have two columns, a column, a column, a beam, and a beam. Very simple. Um, or you can have even something like a pair of pliers as an example of a frame, or um, any number of other things. Like I could have something that's uh, hanging from a wall. Maybe something like this. Um, maybe a oh, it could. Why not have a fixed support? That's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with having fixed supports in frames. Uh, they still qualify as frames, although it's very easy to end up with a statically indeterminate frame if you're not careful. Maybe a, so we'll have a pin joint there and another pin joint here and connect it with something like this. So I could draw frames all day. We could come up with all sorts of different examples of what frames are. Uh, so all of these are frames. What really sticks in my mind as a frame is something that has a very clear uh, geometry. In other words, I have very clear elements. They don't have to be horizontal. They can be a diagonal. They, can, they don't even have to be perfectly straight. Like I can have, um, I can have a framework or a frame that has curved members. There's no reason I can't. I could have a curved member like this, you know, something like this. We don't usually build frames with curved members, but you absolutely can. And it's still in my mind would qualify as a frame. So if you had something like this, where you have a curved member joined to a straight member, that in my mind would still class, would still count as a frame because it's something with very clear and distinct elements. Perhaps that's the, the that's the most in my mind the most important definition for a frame element, or a frame is that they have distinct, discrete elements. Now you can have other things that aren't frames. So for example, um, now you may be able to analyze some of these things in certain limited cases using some of the techniques of frame analysis, but I still wouldn't consider them frames. So for example, a great big brick wall or a great big wall, in my opinion, would not, class, would not be classified as a frame. If you just have a great big wall, well, and I'm not drawing this as like a, let me draw a poorly drawn big wall here. So we have bricks, more bricks, 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 bricks. Oh, brick a brack, brick, brick, brick. <laughs> lots and lots of bricks. That's not real. That is a structure that qualifies the definition of a structure, uh, but it is certainly not a framework. A framework to be a frame, to use all the techniques that we're going to learn about in this section or in this lecture, in its multiple parts, um, is going to be something that has very clean and distinct elements. They can be rigidly, rigidly joined together and they can have pins or rollers or springs or uh, pin, oh, I said pins, uh, they can have ropes and pulleys and all sorts of other things in them, but they have to have clear and distinct elements. If you just have a brick wall, um, now, truth be told, I could say the bricks are individual elements, but they are all joined together continuously. There's, it's not like, there's not a clear place where things just end and begin, uh, or perhaps another good definition would be frames tend to have elements that are longitudinal, or have very, have a very, have a lot of length to them relative to their width. So longitudinal elements is a big, is a big key that you're dealing with frames rather than something else. The very long elements, and then it's not necessarily incredibly long, but things that have a clearly defined uh, preferred direction, something that's significantly longer than it is wide or deep. Uh, obviously, I could just talk about a generic rigid body. Like if I just have a, you know, just a pile of material sitting on the ground, <laughs> that is not a frame. That is a pile of material. It's it's a, you know, it could be a loose pile of material, like a big thing of gravel or something, but that might not even be one rigidly connected object. Um, or if it was a single object, it was just, if it was just a, a big rock or something like that. Well, that would be a single rigid body, but it would not, in my mind, classify as a framework. Fundamentally, a frame or a framework or a simple machine is something that is made of multiple rigid bodies um, connected together clearly, but can, in a way that can be that can be easily and clearly divided. Okay, so I'd also like to discuss frames in relation to machines and trusses. So we have this big um, 
maybe I could draw do this as sort of like a Venn diagram or a pseudo Venn diagram type of thing. So maybe uh, among the category of rigid bodies or systems of rigid bodies, I should probably say systems of rigid bodies because really frameworks are made of multiple independent rigid bodies. But you could have a, a system of rigid bodies that was not a framework. So for example, if this is literally a great big gravel pile, well, I have a system of rigid bodies. Each pebble is a rigid body, but it's not a framework because they're not actually properly connected together. So maybe within systems of rigid bodies, we have frameworks. Or I should probably just say frames. And then inside that, we have trusses and we have uh, simple machines. And so here I can define uh, trusses and simple machines in, term, in, in relation or in the context of frames. Now we've already discussed in, at length what trusses are, but I could say that a truss is a particular type of frame a particular type of frame uh, a particular type of frame that uh, let's say oh a particular type of frame that has straight members pin joints or entirely all the things we talked about in trusses uh, entirely straight members pin joints Uh, pin joints and uh, let's say and of course loads applied at the joints. So you'll re you'll recognize from our discussion of trusses that most a lot of they share a lot of terminology with what we're looking at in frames, and that's no surprise because trusses are a type of frame uh, applied only at at uh, frame or only at joints. Essentially, they are the simplest type of frame. They are relatively simple. They are static, almost all, almost, in almost all cases, statically determinate. They have simple connections. They have loads only at their joints. They are a particular case of frame. And machines, or simple machines, they don't usually share, except on sometimes, uh, even in simple, even in just basic frameworks, you can have uh, things that are similar to pulleys in terms of, oh, cables and the like. So I would say that a simple machine, get that underline squeeze in here, a simple machine is one that ha is a frame uh, that is used to produce some kind of mechanical work. Uh, to produce some amount of mechanical advantage or work. The kind of thing you learn about in physics, uh, elementary physics courses. Um, mechanical advantage or uh, simple work. Or maybe mechanical advantage or mechanical work. Uh, mechanical work. In my mind, this is the only difference between a simple machine and a truss. Maybe I'll just, or and a framework, maybe I'll just write this a little bit higher so it's not getting caught by that. Simple machine. There we go. A simple, or we'll just skip the underline. A simple machine is again, a frame that is used to produce mechanical advantage or mechanical work. So the only difference between, in my mind between a, um, a frame and a uh, um, simple machine is really one of purpose. A uh, frame in general is usually meant to carry some amount of load, but I really think of frames as a more generic or more general term and uh, simple machines as something that, or as a particular case of machines or as a particular case of frames uh, that is really distinguished not by anything about the frame itself, but by about its purpose. It's actually intended uh, use and purpose. So 
I think that is a uh, good way of classifying all these things. Uh, frames, trusses, sim simple machines, joints, what is a frame, what is not a frame. And I think that'll do it for this portion of the lecture. I just wanted this first video to be a very brief introduction to what a frame is, uh, sort of a definitional video. And then the next section, we're going to look at types of joints that can exist within structures or exist within frames. All right, that'll do it for now. Then this is relatively short. Hopefully, uh, let me know if you have any questions. I will see you soon for part two of lecture 11. And as always, thank you.